Hi friends! It's time for more Rosie Revere and the Raucous Riveters. Chapter 7. So here's the picture. And it says here, other ways to hold a paintbrush? And here it says, foot? Teeth? All with question marks. Hmm. Chapter 7. Rosie nodded. She read the flyer again. Oh, remember, let's go, let's backtrack for a second, friends. They had just read this flyer called Art A Go Go. Saturday, 9.30 a.m. Meet at Town Library to receive the theme of the contest. 2 p.m. Judging begins. Artists must paint by themselves. Support teams can set up, clean up, and cheer. No electricity can be used. Okay, that's our reminder. Chapter 7. Rosie nodded. She read the flyer again. The artists have to create the art by themselves, she said. If I can't help June paint, what can I do? You're an engineer, said Letty. Invent something. June's art comes from her heart, said Marion. She just needs the tools to help her hands. But the contest is only two days from now, said Rosie. Better get thinking, said Boss. She spoke too late. Rosie was already thinking. She had so many questions. How could she build a painting machine? How would it load paint? What kind of paint? How many colors? How would June control the brushes without using her hands? How? Rosie flipped open her notebook. She jotted furiously to catch the ideas exploding in her mind. As she did, the sounds of the chattering riveters faded away and Rosie was pulled into her own world of engineering. close-up of these illustrations. Rosie loved engineering. It made her happier than just about anything, and her favorite part was right at the start. She jotted down her ideas, Ooh, kind of like what we do sometimes, friends, when we jot down a bunch of ideas. Do you remember the word for that? It begins with a b, b, b sound, and it ends with ing. Mm. She jotted down her ideas, then she noticed that everything was silent. She stopped scribbling and looked up. Seven smiling riveters stood watching her. They raised their coffee mugs in a silent toast to Rosie. I told you she was up to it, said Aunt Rose. Indeed she is, said Boss. Indeed she is. Rosie felt her cheeks turn red, but this time she did not duck behind Aunt Rose. Rosie Revere looked at the smiling riveters and smiled back. Chapter 8. Ooh, look at this illustration here. It says paintbrush, jump. What do you see happening here? Hmm. Chapter 8. Two days! Rosie had less than two days to invent a contraption to help June. The task was almost too great to imagine, but that didn't stop Rosie from trying. When she got home, she went straight to her attic room. She felt a storm approaching. A brainstorm! Ah, oh, that's the word I was talking about. Well, brainstorm. Rosie loved brainstorming. I-N-G spells ing, friend, right? Anything was possible, even crazy weird ideas. Sometimes Rosie's weirdest ideas made her think in a new way or solved tiny bits of a big problem. She wrote all her ideas in her notebook. What if she made a cat-powered painting pump? It would need a lot of cats and milk. It would probably flop. After all, cats always run off or sit around like lazy lumps could she get a lazy, lumpy cat to power a painting machine? Rosie sketched her idea anyhow. What if she made a paint blobber that used a small catapult to chuck balls of paint at the canvas? What if she combined the two ideas and made a catapult? So catapult is a real word with without hyphens. And here she's saying catapult. Would the cats like it? What would that look like? Rosie sketched it out. Rosie had lots of questions. What she did not have was time. If she spent too long brainstorming, she would run out of time to make and test the invention. Testing was tricky. She remembered the ketchup explosion and the big mess it 
Wait a minute, thought Rosie. A new question popped into Rosie's mind. Could the snake away help? What if it pumped paint instead of ketchup? Rosie decided that this was a good place to start. The snake away used a small pump from the garden pond. It ran on batteries and was too small, but Rosie could use it to figure out the brushing mechanism. After that, she could figure out how to pump the paint without a battery. Step by step, she would solve this problem. Rosie smiled. It was time for the next stage of the process, design. Whew. Friends, I'm getting a little excited thinking about this. Here's chapter nine. Oh, there's so much to tell you about and see on this page. Okay. So it says here, the Paintapalooza one. Paint tank, battery pump, hose, battery, and she crossed it out and said battery pump, electric pump, paint pumped up onto brush, paintbrush, hose. Whoa. Chapter nine. Brainstorming was Rosie's favorite part of engineering, but so was design and research and making prototypes and testing. In truth, Rosie could not pick a favorite part of engineering. That was like picking a favorite cheese. How could a person pick just one? And why would they want to? I'm having a me too about that. Rosie tied up her headscarf. She dumped a pile of engineering treasure on the table next to the broken snake away model five and got working. After three hours, she completed the first model of her new invention, the Paintapalooza One. It was funky. It was weird. But, thought Rosie, it just might work. She set her easel in the yard and put the Paintapalooza on the ground next to it. She grabbed her goggles and called to Gizmo, who was watching from a tree branch. Stay up there, Rosie yelled. Gizmo looped the loop, landed on her branch, and chirped. Me too, said Rosie. Rosie put on her goggles and filled the tank with red paint. Then she kicked the switch with her toe. A line of red paint snaked through the clear tube and flowed onto the paintbrush. It was working. There's the picture. It was working. Rosie stepped up to the easel, reached out, and, and here they give a long dash or hyphen. Snap. <laughs> the hose broke free. It slashed through the air like an angry cobra, spitting red paint everywhere. Back and forth, back and forth, up and around. Rosie swiped at the hose but could not grab it. Paint sprayed over her dress and onto her face and safety goggles. She couldn't see where she was going. Rosie took a step and, and there's another one of those long dashes, crack! Her foot broke the leg of the easel. Whoa! Rosie tripped, flipped, and landed on her back with a thud. The easel teetered and tottered and fell on top of her. Crash! She lay on the ground beneath the easel and sighed. <sighs> Rosie knew that failing was part of engineering, but she didn't like it. The raucous riveters were counting on her, and she could not let them down. Rosie shook her head. Stop and think, she said, and that's all in capital letters. Rosie thought about what had gone wrong with the test. The loose tube was easy to fix. Rosie felt a little better. She asked another question. What had gone right with the test? The pump got the paint through the tube. That was a big deal. She was on the right track. Rosie smiled as the sun hit her painted goggles and they glowed like stained glass windows. At least no one saw me, thought Rosie. That was good. And that's when Rosie heard footsteps. Oh my goodness. Let me see how long chapter 10 is. Oh, you can totally read chapter 10. It's nice and short. I mean, you know I love long chapters, but I'm going to have to pause the video for the next set of them. So here it says, tree house, tree mansion, Upside down, air, read, question, think. Oh, and flap by the bird's wings. <laughs> Rosie, said Ada. Rosie breathed a sigh of relief. It was Ada and Iggy. What are you doing? asked Iggy. I'm just thinking, said Rosie. 
We'll help, said Ada. Ada and Iggy moved the easel and plopped onto the ground next to Rosie. They looked up at the tree and smiled. Just like Rosie, they loved thinking about things. They were full of questions. Bernice was right. They really were questionnaires. That tree needs a tree house, said Iggy, and he thought about how to make one. Why do birds live in trees? asked Ada. How do birds fly? Can they fly upside down? Ada thought about trees and birds and flying and so many other things. It's nice to have friends, thought Rosie. She was glad that her friends had come over. They understood her. They also understood what it was like to get caught up in a project. Ada Twist was a scientist and Iggy Peck was an architect. They always helped one another. The three friends lay beneath the tree for a long time. Rosie told them about the raucous riveters and the art of go, go contest. They had some good ideas. It helped Rosie to brainstorm with friends. Rosie heard a rustle in the bushes. She turned around and looked toward Mrs. Lou's yard, but no one was there. Time to go back to the drawing board, said Rosie. Ada looked at the broken easel. Time to get a new drawing board, she said. The broken one would make a great chalet for Ada's cat, said Iggy. Iggy was right. Ada's cat would love a triangle-shaped Swiss house called a chalet. As Iggy and Ada carried away the easel, Gizmo flew down from the tree and rested on Rosie's shoulder. Ready for Paint-a-Palooza too? asked Rosie. Gizmo chirped. Meep. Yep, this is going to take a lot of paint, said Rosie. We're going to need a bigger bucket and more plastic tubing. Gizmo chirped again. You're right, said Rosie. We need more tape. Lots and lots of tape. And there's just this kind of paper again. Chapter 11. Oh, I don't think we have many chapters with the first word, by. Not like by, but like by, B-Y. You'll know more about it tomorrow. Thanks for listening, friends. Maybe I'll read some actually later today. We'll see. Okay.